He was elected by his fellow members last evening. Good evening and thank you. Um, we will uh, start this evening's agenda with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is adjustments uh, to this evening's agenda. I have one, George. Uh, Keith? Under new business, uh, there will be a motion to transfer monies from the contingency fund. That would be G? Correct. Under 10? Any other adjustments? Uh, seeing none, then uh, the agenda uh, stands. Uh, the next uh, item is approval of the minutes of the May school board meeting. Okay. Um, seeing no adjustments uh, or revisions there. Those minutes would stand. Next, we have comments by high school and middle school representatives. Um, perhaps we could start with the high school. <laughs> Since he's halfway there. <laughs> Matt Martin, junior cableist with high school. Um, Ryan was unable to attend again tonight. Um, since our last meeting, we've only had one meeting as an SAC, and it was kind of a wrap-up meeting as uh, the end of the year. We brought together this year's SAC with next year's SAC, and, um, and this year's eighth graders who will be on the SAC next year also came up to join us. And um, our discussions went well. We talked about the goals that we had this year and how we were able to, to meet them. We talked about the pros and cons of how things went on the SAC this year, and we began to think about uh, building on next year. Um, right now, this school's really winding down. Um, we have two more days worth of finals um, and an assembly on Thursday for, or an awards ceremony for academics on Thursday and graduations on Friday, as you all well know. Um, in the past month, uh, we had the musical, as you all, I don't know if you all got a chance to see it, it was really good. Um, we saw also the past weekend we had state championships in boys lacrosse and girls tennis. Congratulations to them. The baseball team's still going. Um, so Ryan and I would like to thank you as this year's school board members. Um, we had a great time. As did the SAC, we'd like to extend our thanks as well. And once again, we'd like to thank Mr. Sweeney for going out of his way all year for attending our meetings and just um, being a great advisor between the school board and the SAC. Um, we had a great year, and next year's SAC school board representatives are going to be Alicia Chang and Jeff Butterworth, who is here tonight. Um, just like to introduce Jeff. And uh, he's going to be a tough act to fall, I think, but um, I think he'll do a good job. So, <laughs> thanks. Any questions? On behalf of the board, uh, we'd like to thank you for uh, the fine job that you've done in keeping us informed. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, we start next year with an extent, uh, extending an invitation to our new board member, um, an opportunity to visit in the way that uh, many of the rest of us did. I would, uh, I would like to also, because I didn't do that. OK. So uh, two, uh, at least two board members that would like to, um, to visit the high school. So that could be uh, perhaps one of the the first uh, lines of business with the board. That would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good summer. Middle school. I don't know where they are, George, but they don't appear to be here. OK. <laughs> <laughs> At this time of year, um, that's not surprising. 
uh, if for some reason they should show, uh, perhaps we could just get a flag and, and we'll uh, try to insert the middle school uh, report. Uh, we, we also um, are fortunate to uh, have another visitor this evening, and that's Parker Marvin. Uh, Parker got to spend uh, a day as the principal of the uh, Pond Cove Middle School, and I believe he has a report to the board. Parker just asked me to stand here with him, I think. I think he'll be fine. Whoops, he's giving me the report. Got a box or something for him to stand on. <laughs> I'll try, I don't know. We're not supposed to touch this, right? There you go. There we go. It's done. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> I'll be the potted plant. Yeah. I, I have to admit that we've done this for three years now, and each uh, winner of the principal for a day has gone about being principal in a different way. And I, have, I really have to admire the way Parker did it. He took care of his home constituency first. He, he checked with the kids in uh, Mrs. Valente's room and found out they wanted to chew gum and wear hats and so on. Did not want me to tell the rest of the school. So he had you know, bestowed those favors on that third grade class. And he went around the, went around the school kind of doing that on an as-needed basis. I really learned a lot about uh, how to be a politician for Parker. But he does have a, a schedule. You said you could read maybe part of it, part of the things you did on that day. You can pick and choose. How did you start your day? Well, um, I arrived at school at about 8.45 and met with Ms. Tresmeyer and Mrs. St. John. I was Mark late. I he was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I discussed the day and made new rules. And uh, as Ms. Tresmeyer said, had scum extra recess and et cetera. Um, uh, at about 9.45, I went to the kindergarten and high school and went to town hall. I met the superintendent and went to the police station and saw the fire chief and police chief. At um, 11.15, I emailed my mother and Mrs. Rollis about uh, a meeting for uh, kindergarten to first grade orientation. Um, at noon, I, my sister and my nanny came to bring my hat because I forgot it at home. Oh. <laughs> at 12.30, I went to lunch, and at 1, I was back on the job. Um, 1.30, I went to fourth grade and talked with the kids and teachers about homework. <laughs> A lot and, of questions. Uh, over there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, 2.20, I went over the day and went back to class. Um, I like being principal because I like being boss and doing things that I can't normally do, especially making new rules. Um, when I started the day, I was a little unsure, and I like, and I, and I like, I was a little unsure, like I would have fun. And I'd like to say thanks to my parents and Mr. Eisbauer. We had a great time. Questions for the ex-principal? Any questions? Parker? Just Oh, I would like to just say one thing. My son is in the second grade, and the thing that he was most excited about was that he didn't have any homework that night. <laughs> <laughs> I have two boys, as you know, in uh, third grade and second grade. They both enjoyed having you as principal, and uh, we hope to see you back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Anything else? No. You did a great job. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. That was a great report. The next item is communications, and I think that there are a few communications. Beth? I just wanted to make a brief um, comment and apology about the workshop meeting that was about two weeks ago. I made one comment about um, some students' um, feelings that I think were, I guess, misinterpreted and um, and probably inappropriate at the time. And I just wanted to say to all the teachers who've already heard from me, um, but this is to every teacher in the system, that we at 
We think they are doing an incredible job, and the amount of hours and things they put on are greatly appreciated. And as a school board, as we try to move and make changes, it is only in the spirit of really improving our system for every child, and that if we work to make changes, it's not that we feel that what's being done is wrong, it's that we always want to be moving and changing for the better. Thanks. Thank you, Beth. I also have a communication, and um, as uh, newly elected chair, it was my first request uh, to both the board and to the administrative council. Um, it seemed to me that this was a very appropriate time of year uh, to pause for some reflection on uh, any long journey. It's always important to stop, uh, look around, and celebrate what's been accomplished. And so I did ask um, each of the board members, the, the um, I think we've exempted the, the new board member, uh, unless she certainly is welcome to participate, but I did ask um, all of the board members to be prepared, if they wished, to uh, reflect um, this evening briefly on some key accomplishments that they feel have been um, uh, accomplished uh, during this academic year, of which we all know that there are, are, are many. And it's, um, it's, it's basically, uh, a school year with uh, tremendous results that only came uh, from the efforts of uh, the very talented and very dedicated uh, staff that we have, certainly in conjunction uh, with the very committed uh, parents and community members that we also have. Um, I thought that I might, um, again, sort of share my own experiences and, uh, and give three examples of some things that I think were just really outstanding. They each fall in a different class of, of results or accomplishments. The first, I would say, is in terms of some formal systems. Um, I got to participate uh, as a board member with some very positive representatives from the teachers um, uh, group, the te uh, representing the, the, the teachers union, um, along with other board representatives, um, and, and feel that one of the great accomplishments um, of that uh, meeting of the minds uh, was a three-year teacher's contract. Very positive accomplishment. The second um, is, is a little bit um, more informal, um, and I've spoken about this initiative before, uh, but there's an incredible amount of energy behind an initiative um, that was once called the Time Study Initiative. Uh, we're now looking at time usage, um, where basically there's been parents, teachers, administrators and board members uh, coming together to uh, innovatively look at how to better use uh, the time of both te teachers um, and learners in our system. And that's something that will be continued uh, next year, but it was an initiative of this year. Next year we hope to look at and have more discussion about things like looping um, and some innovative class schedules uh, over the summer. Um, both the middle school and high school will be looking collaboratively at some uh, new scheduling possibilities, again, with a mind, with a mind to um, more effective time usage. The third is really a policy, policy initiative, and um, I think that uh, this is representative of many things that don't often get talked about, um, but, but it is reflective of some very positive work done uh, with the Administrative Council uh, and with the uh, Policy Subcommittee, uh, as well as uh, others who have uh, been visitors and involved uh, with that committee. And it has to do with clarifying some uh, expectations around expulsion and reentry into the school system. Now, while this admittedly um, would affect a very limited number of people, I think it does exemplify the kind of strides that have been made this year. And um, if you were to look at those very few students and or those very few parents who have been involved in a very successful reentry, um, it's something that has really meant the world to them. So those are three examples, um, and I would invite the rest of the, the board to, um, to speak. I just wanted to mention a few. Um, I felt this year that the relationship um, that grew with the town council enabled us to get their approval of the space that we really needed to renovate in the middle school, which was the top of the 1930s building. It really enabled us to um, 
have the space we needed and not put any program on the road, and it will give us the expansion space we needed. And along with that, I think they really learned a lot about our, um, about our schools and about community services. And therefore, we got the added benefit of being able to do over the basement of the 1930s building and have a space for our community services program, which then frees up space in the high school in the future. So we not only saw some real physical benefits, or we will see those, but we also gained a, a very good working relationship with town councilors and really got them into the buildings, um, which was really important. And the other thing that I'll mention, and Marie might mention it too, that we moved on with the um, kindergarten study and really looking at what maybe an extended day or a full day kindergarten program might be. And at least we've looked at that and we'll see where it goes from here, but it is something really positive and that might be a change for this system in the future. Thank you, Beth. I'll go next, John. John? Uh, I first wish to thank all the students and the parents, the administrators and the staff for all their help this past year. This was my first year on the board, and I appreciate all the time they've given me and all the information. The items that I found most challenging uh, to begin with was the uh, negotiation with the teachers in reference to their three-year contract, work with George and with Charlie, and the teachers, they were most cordial, respectful, and it was a pleasant experience, and I believe everybody was extremely pleased with the outcome. In reference to the Pond Cove, I want to thank Nancy and Tom in reference to the way they handled the, the uh, kindergarten situation the night we had the parents here. I think they all appreciated the way that you had respected them and listened to their, their concerns, and that went over quite well. And in reference to the high school, I want to thank uh, uh, Peter and Dwight, also the, the students, in reference to the way they handled themselves when they spoke in reference to the amendment to the eligibility policy. I think their input was uh, greatly received and it was a, a big plus. And in reference to the middle school, I want to thank Nancy, also Phil, and uh, in the way the transition went with John taking over assistant principal, you've been extremely helpful and, and you have my vote of confidence. Keith? Uh, I have a couple. Uh, through a tremendous amount of work with the administrators and the staff and the school board, uh, able to work together uh, for many, many hours to get the budget uh, in the condition that we got it in. Uh, I think the diligence of our process uh, was, uh, was well recognized by the town council uh, and passed without a lot of, uh, a lot of trouble. It, it, uh, the whole process of the budget uh, seem to go better than past years this year, and uh, we'd like to certainly continue that, that work. Uh, uh, I wanted to highlight the incredible uh, improvement and quality of our music department. Uh, we don't get to see the, the uh, elementary schoolers in concert too often, but the concerts that I did get to see were Great, the kids were obviously having a great time at the at, at Pond Cove concerts. I went to the recent uh, middle school band and chorus concerts, of course, with Mr. Boffers last night, and the uh, obvious uh, outpouring of, of emotion from his former students and all the other students that came there. Uh, and uh, certainly in the high school, Mr. Richardson and, and Ms. Lee, with the, the work that they've done with their ensembles has just been amazing. If, if those of you that you know, even just a few years ago, the, the strides that they've made uh, is, is just incredible. Uh, one last one to the middle school and, and the work that was done on your outside review, the, the Downs report, that uh, that's a, it's a, always a difficult process to look inside, I guess. Thanks. George? Kevin. Change is always difficult, and when we first begin on the road to change, the expectations may not be met exactly in the way we expected. However, I think one of the most important things the board did this year was adopting the concept of establishing goals with the administrators, delineating the requested outcomes, and letting the administration move on with it. I think that's a very positive direction. It certainly needs refinement, like all change, needs constant attention and refinement. 
But I feel very, very good about that, and I think the board should feel very, very good about that. Uh, it's certainly a step in the right direction. Um, the budgeting process um, was an extraordinary experience for me. Uh, I don't know what my uh, preconceived notions were when I came on the board, but I think we did a very thorough job under some very positive leadership in examining every item and putting every item to the test of need and presenting to the town a need space budget which was subsequently approved and I was delighted to be a part of that process. And from that I'll go directly into schools. In the high school, Peter and Dwight have been a delight. I sense a change in philosophy from working on students to working with students. Um, I think that's a very positive change, and I think that the genesis will continue over the next few years, uh, certainly positive. And also in the high school, it was a pleasure to be involved with the SAC and to hear what the SAC had to say about various items. In the middle school, the Outdoor Experience Committee, watching them work on their charge, putting it together, presenting it to the board, moving it through the process, gave me an opportunity to see middle school teachers at work, as did the Nelms report, which I thought was a very positive move. It provides us with an opportunity to, uh, to continue improvement, to continuous improvement. Finally, in Pond Cove, it was a less comfortable situation, but watching the kindergarten situation evolve and knowing that at the end, despite the controversial decision, we as a board with the administrators were able to step back and come up with methods to be more proactive when things like that happen in the future, if things like that happen in the future. All in all, I think we've had a pretty good year. There's a lot still to be done, and I look forward to the challenge. Okay. Thank you. Marie. Um, in, in my few months on the board, um, actually, uh, most of my involvement has been with kindergarten um, in the situation that happened in the fall with the um, kindergarten and um, the parents who were here at the meeting that night. And I am happy, as Kevin said, even though it was a very controversial issue, I am happy with the outcome that um, the board made a decision to help the teachers in the classroom. Um, and, and they gave them the support of maybe not everything that the parents were asking for, but certainly showed that we were able to listen. Um, the kindergarten study, the full um, day kindergarten study, as Beth had mentioned, um, is something that has progressed over the last few months. And I think um, soon we will be able to put together um, a timeline and a proposal to come to the board um, within the next few months of suggestions that have come from the kindergarten teachers, um, Tom Eismeyer, Beth and myself, and um, parents who were on the committee as well. And the, the program for a lengthened day kindergarten really um, will, will focus on um, three major issues of, of kindergarten kindergartners um, to develop um, socially, academically, and developmentally. Um, and I, I think we've done a lot of good work. There's a lot of research. Um, and, and we'll see where that takes us. Thank you. As well, uh, we've asked the, uh, uh, the principals in their reports to, uh, to reflect on uh, those things that they, they feel um, m might exemplify the accomplish accomplishments of the, uh, this particular school year. Um, one last, one last uh, piece of communication, uh, unless there are some Kevin, others. Kevin, I think, wanted to speak to Okay. Did, was there another the item? I do have one item. Okay. Why don't you do that? All right. <coughs> Within the school community and throughout this community, good things are happening every day that we very, very rarely hear about. Um, 
This is true of our teachers as well, and it, it's come to my attention that four of our high school teachers, special ed teachers, facilitated some of our young people with the disabilities to be able to attend the high school prom. It's people with Tina Johnson, Kathy Van Doren, Deb Thayer, Jackie Petrillo, and I believe Tina's husband was involved in that effort as well. I just think that's extraordinary, and I wanted to say thank you. Okay. Um, the uh, last piece of communication that I have is um, last evening after the swearing in of the new board members, uh, the board held uh, their organizational meeting and established uh, membership um, of the board members uh, to specific subcommittees and um, standing committees. I'd like to run through that uh, very briefly. Um, uh, the finance subcommittee, uh, members of that subcommittee are Marie Prager, John Ridge, and Keith um, Witherell will chair that. The policy subcommittee, subcommittee um, will have as its uh, standing members uh, Beth, uh, Jennifer, and Kevin, and a determination will be made um, in terms of the chair. Uh, I believe tomorrow morning we'll do that. Standing committees, uh, athletic ed advisory committee is Keith's, uh, co-curricular fee committee is Kevin, um, as well as uh, Kevin on community coalition. The legislative uh, liaison contact person is Jennifer. Uh, the main school board association delegate is uh, Marie. Uh, negotiations will be determined as needed. Uh, pool committee, uh, Beth will continue to serve in, in that role. Um, the, the paths, general advisory board, uh, Kevin uh, will continue his involvement there. Staff development will have two board members, uh, Jennifer and Marie. Technology steering uh, will be Beth. Uh, technology curriculum committee, K through 12, um, is Marie. On the ad hoc committees, um, these are those that meet as needed. Uh, the affirmative action committee, uh, Keith will serve on that. Sabbatical leave, Marie. The positive action committee, um, there's a whole bunch to choose from. Uh, Beth, Jennifer, John, Kevin, and Keith. Um, the calendar committee, there will be three representatives, Beth, Marie, and John. Uh, regional calendar committee still to be determined. Kindergarten study committee we see as something that will be continued, um, that will be open. The continuous improvement time usage, um, I'll continue with that and Jennifer is going to join me. Um, and uh, uh, given the need, um, we will have a superintendent search committee also. Moving on uh, to the superintendent's report. Right. Schools are very complex operations and are successful based on many people. Uh, certainly the teachers are the key players, but also the administrators, the custodians, bus drivers, etc. And once a year we recognize our employees for a long-term service, and we do this in increments of five. And so I'm going to uh, mention who they are for this year, uh, tonight, and then we honor them again in the fall at our opening day meeting. Those who have completed five years, Fred Berenger, Paula Harris, Skip Crosby, Pat Dubois, Mary Dulac, David Ferrick, Catherine Kelsey, Nancy Miles, Craig Roberts, Therese Roberts, Tammy Thatcher, Wendy Terrio, Mary Hart, and Claudia Racky. Those are all five years. Ten years service, Janet Hoskin, Barbara McLean, Mary Ann Schumann, Nancy Scott, Deb Thayer, Margaret Welch. Fifteen years, Randy Dill, Ray Michaud, David Perry, and Nancy Rollis. We have one 20-year employee, Marie Hayes. We have one 25-year employee, Mary Ann Casey. And we have three 30-year employees this year, Lyle Kramer, Bruce Lind, and Janice Small. And we thank them all for their service. Okay. And then the other end of the spectrum is there are people who do resign. Hard to make a smooth transition there. <laughs> right. uh, I have three resignations this evening. Barbara Powers, who is a teacher at Pond Cove School, is leaving us to be the principal in Falmouth at the Plummer Mott School. Uh, Josh Olins, who was a teacher at Pond Cove, 
will be taking a second grade position in Falmouth, and Rachel Clark, a teacher at Pond Cove, will be taking a fifth grade position in Yarmouth. And I have one transfer, Jill Bell will be transferring to grade five. I also, although it's not on here, I, I'm sure Tom will mention it as well, but I want to be sure, and with all of the other recognition we're doing, I did want to comment on the research night at Pond Cove last week, and Sherry Robinson, it was an amazing event, and just to see the growth in that event from last year to this year was, was quite incredible, and I know that it represented a great deal of time and effort on Sherry's part, as well as the students and the parents. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll now have the principal's reports and um, start with Pond Cove. Tom? Good evening. Um, thanks for asking, Cynthia. When, we, when I think about, back about what symbolizes the accomplishments at Pond Cove, I, I brought a few documents uh, just to be representative, certainly not complete. And at the top of my little pile tonight is just a, a list of the names of the Pond Cove students and their topics for, for research night last week. There were over 80 who actually made it to the evening. I think we probably had 100 who expressed an interest, but not everybody could come that night. And this is a reflection not just on Shari's work in the Library Media Center and their great organizational talents and dedication, but the teachers and parents who support efforts like this. It starts, we, we had K kids, one, two, three, uh, four, and by the time they get to fourth grade, they seem to be very skilled in that research process. I thought it was a terrific night, and for me, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, second, in springtime, uh, another symbol for us, um, the PCPA has worked with teachers and students at Pond Cove to produce two separate booklets of student writing which the kids do in the beginning of the year and toward the middle of the year. Each child in the school gets a chance to uh, have a work polished and published with an illustration. This is grades one and two, and this is grades three and four. Um, it's a, a good example, not just of student work, but the kind of powerful partnerships we can have when we work together with parents. A, another bound product, this is uh, new this year, as you know, we changed the organization of fourth grade somewhat to go back to uh, self-contained format. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I was very pleased with that. Um, we're also putting more emphasis on, the, on curriculum topics and studies, such as social studies. The fourth grade teachers, all eight of them, made a commitment to really get organized with social studies this year. Um, they spent a lot of their own time working up uh, resources and material and teaching techniques for main studies because, believe it or not, even though it's required, it's hard to find some of these things. And one of the symbolic products they came up with was there are about 150 separate research reports in this document that the fourth graders did. Um, they all signed up and by the end of the year had their, uh, I think it was offered in the spring, signed up for a topic, did the research, printed it, and the printing was funded by the PCPA. I'm really proud of that. I think it exemplifies the fine work of that team and that fourth grade class. I think they're in really good shape. And uh, last, this is the second year that we've done a parent survey. I, again, I've mentioned I wasn't entirely happy with the format we had last year. We, it's a slightly different format this year. So I'll wave this at you to show you that 80% of the people agreed or strongly agreed with the uh, six or seven positive statements that were on the survey. And about three quarters of the people who responded, we had over 100 so far, um, gave Pond Cove an A or a B in major areas such as curriculum, instruction, school climate, and so on. I'll have a lot more to say about that when, it, uh, when it's time to analyze in detail. but. I think it shows that not just the level of accomplishment, but the level of understanding and support that parents have at Pond Cove. And one comment in particular, people went out of their way to mention the positive climate at Pond Cove, and this one stuck out. I get the impression, one parent said, that everyone who works at Pond Cove, even the office staff, is there because they love kids. I just wanted people to hear that one, because I agree with that. Uh, needless to say, um, we still have work to do, but uh, A's and B's aren't bad, and um, we'll work, uh, we'll analyze it further, probably use this uh, data at our school improvement team 
uh, school quality review session this summer. Um, uh, finally, it's not often that I get to do this because I have mixed emotions about it. Uh, as Cynthia has mentioned, three people have decided to leave Pond Cove and the capitalism of the system. And I wanted to express my gratitude and best wishes to Josh Olins, who worked at Pond Cove for four years in first grade. Rachel Clark, who spent 13 years in uh, Pond Cove and in the intermediate unit. And Barbara Powers, who's been 18 years, I think, in, at Pond Cove. Uh, and the middle school and the high school as an administrator and a teacher and, and everything else. We're going to miss them all. I know it's a tough decision for them, but I'm sure they'll do very well in their new positions. Tom, do you know if those letters and lines um, and the other books are available at the library? They might be nice things to share with the community. I, th I think they are. Yeah. And, it, and success breeds success. I think you, you saw my comments about the research night kind of really blossoming, so we have a logistical problem. We want to get more, we want to get a copy of Letters and Lines to every student next year. We're working on the details about that. But I'll make sure the library gets a copy. <clears throat> other questions for Tom? John. How is the enrollment shaping up for the kindergarten for the fall? In terms of numbers. <laughs> Thank you for asking. It's kind of like a uh, gas gauge. It's on the way down a little bit now. It was up to, uh, I think the last time I reported, in the high 120s, but it's in the about 119 now. So I'm watching it very carefully. I do not anticipate asking for an eighth section. We'd, we'd have to get a lot more kindergarten students coming in by August. In fact, I'm watching this seventh section very, very closely at the moment. We are anticipating seven as budgeted. If it drops further, then Cynthia and I will have to have a discussion about what to do. But uh, as Marie mentioned, I think we have a good process. We can talk openly about it and I think uh, make a quality decision anytime during the summer. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I forgot about that. I just wanted to make another comment. You mentioned Josh and Rachel, and I did exit interviews with them today, and they wanted to be sure that they made the point that in both instances, they have young families and the new jobs are much closer to home for them, and that it in no way was a dissatisfaction with teaching here. I know it's a tough decision for them, and it's hard to see them go. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Nancy, middle school. Good evening. Um, first, I'd like to talk about some um, highlights that we don't often get to talk about. They're student accomplishments, but they're singleton things and maybe things that you're not aware of. Um, one of our current seventh grade students is an aspiring skater, and she's actually won regional competitions. Her name is Alexa Ainsworth. And Alexa is remarkable not only in her own individual accomplishment in skating, but also because she remains fully involved in her education at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School, meets all the requirements, um, takes care of her practice schedule and adjusting her schedule, and really compliments to her for that. We also have a number of students who have won swimming awards outside of our school competitions, and I'm not going to try to name them all because I'm afraid I'll miss somebody. But once again, these students devoted many hours to things beyond the school day, but still retained very strong and high academic standing at school and had to be away for competitions and always took care of making sure they saw their teachers, took care of classroom responsibilities and project responsibilities. So they're really meeting those goals that you hope for young people that um, they'll accept more responsibility as they get older, and these people certainly are. We also have a number of students that I have been able to share their names with you in the past. I believe it was at our last meeting in World Languages who placed very well in our national exams. And we also have a student who this summer has written a play and his play is going to be produced by a children's workshop. So those are just some of the things. And we have other things that, that go on, but a few of the things that happen for students in our school that they do in addition to coming and working with us every day. So compliments to them. Other things that want, went on for us, um, one of our highlights was starting the year off with a really intact behavior code. Um, and board members, parents, and teachers, and administrators worked on this last year. We had a rollout plan. We all talked about it as a staff and how we would all work together. We informed the students. And together, as an entire learning community, parents, students, and teachers, we've all worked this year, I think, to have a very successful year and very clearly stated what the expectations and behavior were. So I think that was a great success. 
Kevin mentioned one of our other successes I felt was a good example of us working together, and that is with our outdoor experience. And really coming together, having a charge by the board, looking at it, and I think our result was something that we really stopped presenting a program in isolation and really have developed a program for all middle level students in grades five through eight. In January, sometimes in Maine, you're looking for those shining moments because it can be kind of a long month or as we head into our next three months of winter after January, it can look long. Gail Schmader helped us pull off our first career fair and it was wonderful uh, for our seventh and eighth graders and a chance for a lot of community members to get involved. Um, people who could come and present that day but maybe can't be with us on a daily basis as volunteers really volunteered their time and shared a lot of information with our students and we look forward to more and improved career fairs in the future. It was an excellent first experience for us. I also agree that one of the highlights of the year would be our NELMS report and the work that we did on our self-study, um, having the visitors here, um, getting the results, getting the um, compliments for the things that we do well and the encouragement to make the improvements for the future and we look forward to that. During the NELMS report too, another chance for our students to shine in that they hosted many of the NELMS visitors on tours and things and they received high compliments for them for their ability to speak about their school and their community and all of those people from away were very impressed with the capabilities of the students. One of the moments for the faculty, I'm not sure they would describe this as a highlight or even a shining moment, but I think it is going to put us in a, a good place. All year long we have devoted a lot of time. Um, every middle school faculty member has served on a curriculum committee for looking at the learning results and aligning our curriculums with the learning results so we could understand where the gaps were and begin to identify them as a middle school. We have gone through, they have aligned all of our current curriculums with them. Uh, we know where the gaps are. And the most important part about this is all this work was done in connection with student work. So it was actually what the students were producing, not what our intention was, not what we hoped to have happen, but actually what the students produced and aligning that. And I think that was an excellent piece of work and my compliments to the faculty for that. And I think it will help inform our practice for the future. I'd like to thank all the parents um, and board members that we worked with all year in helping us become a better place. Um, sometimes teaching in the middle is a, an interesting place to be, as they all are, but um, it's an interesting place to be. You sort of have to have the skin of a rhinoceros, I think, um, to work there. You don't get a lot of accolades. We understand that. Uh, we get letters from students who had us 15 or 20 years ago and saying, you know, I was just thinking the other day, you did make a difference in my life. But we don't often hear that right at the moment. So I really thank all of the people who've hung in there with us and continue to work with us. Just a few quick reminders on, and an invitation to you all. Tomorrow night we do have our recognition evening for the eighth graders. It is something that the parents put on. I'm not sure if you received invitations or not, but I know that they would be glad to have any of you drop by um, who would like to. And this is where the parents of the current eighth graders just recognize for a moment all of them together. It's not an awards assembly, but all of them together for completion of their middle level education. And it does start at 7 p.m. in our cafetorium. And anyone is welcome to attend. And other than that, I think that's our year. Um, we look forward to a restful July and then getting back and getting busy again in August. So thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, questions for Nancy? Thanks. Peter, high school. Before moving to uh, highlights uh, of the year. I'd like to just bring you up to date quickly on some recent past events and then a major upcoming uh, event. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody that had anything to do uh, with one of the most successful junior senior proms that I've ever seen. Uh, from junior class advisor Betsy Nielsen to the committee that worked with her and the junior class officers, the parents that chaperoned, and every student that attended. Um, this, uh, this prom could be held up, I think, uh, as an example uh, of the kind of positive uh, uh, activities that students can be involved in. We heard compliments from uh, every area. We, we held it at the Marriott. Um, 
guests at the Marriott were coming to me. They spotted me as the principal because I was uh, saying good night and greeting to students as they were leaving and greeting them as they were arriving. Uh, so they were coming to me and telling me how impressed they were with the behavior of our young people. The South Portland police uh, officer who was hired for the evening uh, several times during the evening complimented me on the way our students uh, behave themselves. The hotel staff uh, made a point of seeing me at the end of the evening, told me that any time a group from Cape Elizabeth wants to come that they would be glad to uh, have us back. Uh, there are many evenings when uh, uh, an evening like that you, you look at it as a success as long as nothing uh, uh, untoward uh, occurred. This uh, was not one of those, those. This was one of those evenings where everything went well uh, from a management standpoint. But I suspect that the students in attendance uh, would confirm that they also had a wonderful time. It was just a, kind of a magical evening, and I'd like to thank everybody, including the students, for their ability to live up to the expectations uh, that we talked with them about. Coming up uh, Friday at two o'clock, as all of you know, is uh, is graduation, and we're in the midst of uh, rehearsals. <laughs> we, uh, suffice it to say, we won't be marching in step as they come in. Uh, we won't be looking for that. Um, I do think it's going to be uh, a great ceremony. We've made some conscious decisions with the committee uh, regarding uh, aspects that they would like to emphasize. And there are some key, th some key points, I think. In the uh, choice of, uh, not so much the choice, in, in the decision uh, regarding people uh, to be on the dais to uh, congratulate them, uh, we are emphasizing the, the totality uh, of their educational experience. This is not a grade 9 through 12, uh, the celebration of a grade 9 through 12 uh, experience. Uh, a whole town is involved in the education of its young people, and so uh, on the dais, uh, representing the town, and in this case, uh, a very fortunate uh, uh, coming together of rep representing the parents will be Charlie Greer uh, as uh, board chair or outgoing board chair and as parent. Uh, Cynthia, Dr. Moles, will be uh, representing the K through 12 uh, aspect uh, that this is a, many of our students are, uh, are, are students who have started kindergarten and gone all the way through the uh, system, and so Cynthia will be representing the K through 12 uh, aspect. Uh, Dwight and I obviously will be representing the, uh, the high school uh, faculty and staff. In our guests of honor, we'll be uh, uh, recognizing two people for obvious reasons, uh, Mr. Randy Ray and Mr. Rick DeFusco, uh, who be, because of uh, all of their outstanding work with the students that uh, are in this graduating class, and Mr. William Jordan, uh, thanking him for his many years uh, of service to the uh, town and as a supporter of the young people of Cape Elizabeth. And again, uh, a, a graphic representation that the whole town is involved in the education of its students. It's not just the high school. Um, we're working out the, uh, the details of how to march in and how to march out and, and uh, uh, how to use a hesitation step, step without tripping or without turning ankles. Uh, it's an unusual situation because we, re we prepare for three possible venues. That's unusual in my experience. Um, the way that that will work, and I think it's important uh, for anybody that may be listening to, to understand this, is our primary site is Fort Williams. Um, obviously, for scenic reasons, it would be a, a beautiful spot to hold it. Early Friday, uh, I will make a decision as to whether or not uh, and dependent on whether, whether or not we will hold the, um, uh, the ceremonies either at Fort Williams or back at the school. I will then hold off, if it, if it does turn out that we need to, uh, that I need to make the decision to hold the ceremony at the school, I will hold off as late as I possibly can uh, making the decision uh, between the outside, the soccer field, and the inside, which would be in the gymnasium. Um, Obviously, preparing for all those eventualities really puts uh, the pressure on in terms of uh, timing and, and allowing yourself enough time to get set up uh, and yet not having all the information that you need or the crystal ball that you need to, uh, to know everything. 
I do want to assure people that uh, even if it is inside, we have plenty of uh, room. We, uh, we still can uh, easily fit the 12, we, we will have 1,200 chairs if we are outside, and we will be able to fit 1,200 uh, people inside the gym in chairs and bleachers. Uh, so the, uh, I know that a few people have contacted me and uh, said, well, you know, you haven't issued tickets to the graduation. Uh, uh, you know, will we be able to get in if it's, if it's inside? Um, we haven't issued tickets because there uh, really was no need. We have the capacity inside. It will be warmer, uh, stickier, but we have the capacity to hold the people uh, that we need. Graduating class will be, it looks like, uh, right now. Uh, and and all, all signs are positive. It looks like uh, we will be at 119 students graduating uh, on Friday afternoon. I hope uh, that as many of you as possible can make it either to Fort Williams or uh, to the uh, high school soccer field or gymnasium. Yeah, last night's weather reports were not promising for Friday, but that, that's three days away. Uh, to go to the review of the year, it's uh, often difficult to, uh, to, to capture everything. Uh, there are certain areas, uh, co-curricular and, and athletic events, which lend themselves very well to, to recognition. But the uh, greater academic program is sometimes hard to, uh, to quantify. But uh, uh, throw out a few things in an attempt to give a, a thumbnail sketch of, of some of the things that I think are indications uh, that the uh, program is strong and that students are taking advantage uh, of it. Uh, some of the obvious things are that uh, uh, the, the quality of the work that seniors have done uh, with their counselors and teachers in preparing for the next step. Uh, they, are, they are well prepared, uh, they have earned uh, the college acceptances that, uh, that they have uh, garnered thus far. It's, uh, uh, they've done an impressive job. Uh, I, I feel very confident that those, um, those next steps are going to be successful ones for our graduates. The, this year's se senior class earned scores on the MA, MEA exams last year, at the end of last year, which uh, were reported to you earlier, which were among the top in the state. This year's junior uh, class uh, in the uh, PSAT National Merit uh, Scholarship uh, competition, 10% uh, of the class has earned at least commendation uh, in, this, uh, in this program. Uh, what we would expect would be 5%. So that would be a normal uh, type of year. 10% uh, of our uh, senior class uh, is earning uh, commendation or above. Uh, we, we have yet to hear how many semifinalists and finalists we will have, but they, we have no, been notified now that they will be uh, at either earning commendation or semifinalist status. Uh, when I look at the uh, scheduling that has gone on in the past month uh, and look at the student schedule, the number of them, the number of students that come to me for waivers of our policy uh, regarding not taking uh, more than seven subjects, asking to take eight subjects. Uh, the norm uh, often is seven subjects. Uh, I, I see that they are selecting very challenging programs. The number of requests to appeal um, uh, placement, uh, wanting to be in a higher level, honors level or AP level has been very impressive, as has been the rate of acceptance of those appeals. A very high percentage of the students that uh, have appealed have been approved, sometimes on probationary status, to, but uh, it is very clear that, that the uh, department heads and, and faculty members want students to be given the chance to succeed uh, and want them to be in the right uh, level. I've, I've enjoyed that process. It's, it's, it's a great, it's a wonderful opportunity to sit and listen to a student advocate for him or herself. Uh, in regards to why they want to go to that higher level. There have been demonstrations of outstanding work, uh, poetry readings, uh, some of the exhibitions by the Fine Arts Department, uh, including uh, normal art, uh, large art exhibitions to the small uh, and relatively uh, daily or weekly occurrences uh, on, in, rel in uh, certain spots of the school where uh, different uh, classes in the visual arts have, have uh, displayed their work. I I'm amazed by it. The concerts, uh, uh, those types of things that, that uh, showcase the talents of our students. Uh, less visible but uh, extremely impressive are the types of independent study projects that students become involved in. Uh, there's a form there are some formalized uh, classes where, for example, the AP junior English class where in the last quarter students have the option 
uh, if they wish to uh, to uh, follow that option for independent study projects. Uh, Ms. Martin gave me the um, the uh, requests and the, the, the list of projects. Uh, you would be absolutely amazed. There are students that uh, are uh, writing operas, that are uh, writing novels, uh, collections of short stories during this, uh, during this uh, time period. I just had the pleasure over the last week of being uh, an evaluator of uh, uh, what I'm assuming is a first novel uh, by Matt Martin, who has been your uh, student council, one of your student council reps uh, here. Uh, Ms. Martin asked me if I would be the evaluator of, uh, of Matt's uh, novel. Uh, I, I can uh, only tell you, uh, I, I can tell you how impressed I was uh, reading that and thinking back to um, my own days as a student and wondering whether I would have been capable of producing, of the discipline that it took to produce a, a work like that. And I know that Matt's was one example uh, of excellence and there were many others uh, that uh, I, I was not privileged to evaluate. The PATHS program is a very important part of our curriculum and a couple of weeks ago Cape Elizabeth was extremely well represented at the graduation exercises at uh, PATHS. I hope that uh, every student that was graduating that day from Cape Elizabeth um, uh, felt the support that was there because we had school board members, teachers, the superintendent, adm other administrators uh, present there. I think ours was the strongest delegation and I hope that our students felt that. I think a couple of individual achievements by our past students are worthy of notice uh, that, that uh, have not been brought to the board's attention. Two of our seniors, Vinnie Olson uh, and Chad O'Malley, have won statewide competitions which now lead them to be representatives of the state of Maine, state of Maine in national competitions. Vinnie's um, uh, competition was the, the Ford AAA Student uh, Auto Car Care Challenge in which uh, uh, teams, of uh, teams of two uh, from various uh, other uh, technical centers uh, were set to solving very difficult troubleshooting challenges. Uh, Vinny and his partner finished first and will be going to uh, Tennessee uh, later this month to compete in the national competition. Chad, uh, as a part of the health occupations uh, competition sponsored by the main, uh, the main student, uh, the main state health occupations of America student organization, uh, HOSA. Uh, was finished first in the CPR first aid competition and will be heading to Florida uh, later this month. Uh, both are examples of, uh, of the reach for excellence that our students continue to, uh, to make. It's, it's very clear that students here push themselves in many ways beyond the academic classroom too. And uh, you've heard uh, some of the mention during the year of the, of the, out, the excellence of our co-curricular and athletic program uh, as measured by the types of participation, uh, the, the solid slates of candidates for student office. They, I think, have picked up on the momentum uh, that, the, that the SAC has built this year, the initiative that the SAC has taken in important policy matters, including the aforementioned eligibility policy, but such things as developing course feedback systems uh, for, our, for our faculty. Uh, students have distinguished themselves in, the, in speech, in Lincoln-Douglas debate, in policy debate. That has included state championships uh, and large representation in national competitions. Uh, the jazz band successes have been well chronicled in these meetings uh, in all venues that they have attended, including the regional and state, and then most notably at the Berkeley College of Music Jazz Festival where they finished second in our division. The outstanding theatrical performances all of those are examples of, of extremely strong co-curricular participation. And it's interesting to note that all of these are done by, uh, are, are uh, guided by advisors who uh, work very hard at allowing students to participate in more than one activity. Many schools with a success rate uh, like this that's just been mentioned would achieve that by allowing students to only focus on one activity and devote all of their time to that. In our school, uh, students are tackling two and three and four of these activities. Athletics have been well chronicled. We had uh, five state champions uh, this year, girls and boys soccer, girls swimming, and then most recently, and I'd like to add my congratulations to them at this time, both the girls tennis team and the lacrosse team, boys lacrosse team. But regardless of uh, state championships aside, every team that I've watched uh, this year and in every game that I've uh, been present at, 
the uh, members of our team have carried themselves like champions on the field. There's never been a moment when I haven't been proud of them. They've exhibited tremendous pride in sportsmanship. In fact, two of the teams, uh, the girls swimming team and the ice hockey team, are being have been recognized and will be presented uh, at the awards uh, assembly with uh, the uh, Maine Principals Association Sportsmanship Award for hockey and the Southern Maine uh, Swim Officials uh, Sportsmanship Award for girls swimming. I'm as proud of, or, or prouder of those uh, 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 recognitions as I am of the state champions. Uh, the individual performances throughout have been, uh, have been wonderful to watch and we've had all American, all state, all conference uh, participants throughout. Uh, Keith uh, Weatherby has worked very hard and I think has improved the input into the evaluation of those programs. Uh, we, we have more complete and better uh, information from both students and parents coming into the, the uh, athletic programs. We work with a parent community who has high expectations uh, but has supported us in all of our attempts to reach those expectations. I found that to be a delight to work with. And finally, as I finish this first year in my job, I would like to both commend and thank the high school faculty uh, for constantly looking for ways to meet individual student needs and for the, their willingness to continually, continually assess what we do and look for ways to improve what we offer. Thank you. Any questions for Pete? John. Would you please share with us who the dignitary has been selected to be the keynote speaker at the graduation, please? Yes, the speakers, uh, again, a conscious decision by the uh, committee. Uh, they chose to have speakers that have touched their lives directly. And so Paul, Mr. Paul Jackson, who many of you know, uh, has been a longtime teacher uh, at Cape and who um, retired last year but has still been teaching uh, this year, uh, one section, uh, is going to be the keynote speaker. And then uh, Dwight Ely and Elaine Brownell, uh, will be faculty speakers, uh, again, um, reflecting the desire of the class to have speakers who uh, have very close contact uh, with them and who have touched them. Thank you. Other questions for Pete? Thank you very much. I suspect this segment of the agenda, um, we have recouped uh, the minutes that uh, Charlie had asked people to um, <laughs> Uh, shaved down in the last uh, couple of meetings. <laughs> All very much worthwhile. Thank you. Uh, moving on uh, to committee reports, um, finance subcommittee. Keith. Thank you. We uh, we met earlier this evening uh, at 6:30. Uh, discussed. Uh, we signed the warrants. We discussed a bus purchase and approved. Uh, the price of $58,570 for the purchase of a, of a new bus, which basically happens about once a year. Uh, we discussed uh, an increase in the EdTech 2 salaries and benefits for the next uh, fiscal year. Uh, we talked about a food service uh, program deficit that we're ending up with at the end of the year. Uh, we're looking at a projected end of the year balance of negative $23,600 uh, approximately. Uh, there'll be a, a vote taken later on to transfer some money into that account. Uh, Sue Weatherby presented us with a, a report of the facilities enterprise account, which uh, is basically the account that monies go into uh, when people rent our facilities through community services, uh, birthday parties, and that type of thing. Uh, balance on hand being about eleven thousand uh, dollars. We agreed to uh, spend some of that on uh, some computer and video projection, as well as uh, helping out with uh, the final cleaning of the 1930s building after the construction is done. We need to hire more people to do that in a shorter amount of time once the construction itself uh, is finished. Uh, we also reviewed the appropriations report and as of I guess the first of the month I, uh, we were 89 percent expended for the year which is right on on track. Uh, I'd like to congratulate and thank Pauline Portria for all your work this year and we're glad to have you here and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. 
ditto for being glad to have her here, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Uh, the next is the uh, report out from the policy subcommittee, which, um, which I'll present. Uh, we did meet on May 13th and uh, discussed um, a number of items. Uh, we're working through the process of updating the uh, policy manual in accordance with the feedback that we have received from MSMA. Um, very instrumental uh, in that uh, process has been Mary Bruns, and Mary attended that meeting and uh, brought the group up to date uh, with regard to uh, policies that were required, policies recommended, et cetera. Uh, we did work through, um, I believe, the entire list of required policies and took some, uh, some definitive action, and uh, we'll be talking about those uh, in just a few minutes. Um, the uh, one that will not be presented uh, this evening for first reading has to do with the whole special education series, um, and uh, those um, sample policies have been uh, shared with Claire. Um, yes, okay. Um, they were shared with Claire, and uh, We'll be having some further discussion of those tomorrow. Uh, the agenda for the June meeting uh, will be a report out from the fundraising uh, subcommittee, um, also a review of the special education uh, policy series, and uh, as well, there's um, we will be uh, developing a draft policy, uh, one that's required on truancy. That next meeting is tomorrow uh, at 7:45 in the William Jordan Conference Room. Okay. Um, next is the uh, report out, and it will be very brief, on the continuous improvement uh, team uh, for time. Uh, there was a meeting uh, for that group on May 26th. Uh, it was uh, nice to hear uh, the updates from each of the schools. Uh, they provided a status update. Um, we did walk through a bit of a sequence uh, to be used generally for any kind of significant change, for example, a scheduling change, talked about the process. Uh, that would be important to be used in terms of uh, successfully looking at, evaluating, and implementing uh, any changes. The next meeting uh, for that group will uh, be in September on the 22nd, uh, 4 to 5 p.m., again in the William Jordan Conference Room. My understanding is, uh, Keith, um, Kevin, that you have a, uh, a path, paths report? Just a brief, okay. brief report. Um, as Peter already uh, mentioned, past graduation was on May 28th. It was attended by uh, Cynthia, Peter, myself, Tina Johnson. I'm sure I'm missing two or three others. We, we were de Claire, yes, how could I forget Claire? Uh, certainly the best attended uh, by any other school district by far, and, uh, certainly, and recognized by everyone there. Uh, as you know, I serve on the past General Advisory Committee, and uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to mention the students who graduated from these programs, and I'll try and run down this real fast. Uh, Joseph Barker, uh, auto mechanics, graduated with honors. Arias Carone, electricity. Jordan Gower, um, carpentry, with honors. Jonathan Halfacre, Video Technology, Bethany Ingham, uh, Early Childhood Occupations, Michael Kempton, Welding, with honors, David Lyman, Auto Mechanics, with honors, Keely Mallet, Graphic Arts, Caitlin Madison, Fast Foods, with honors, Brian Miller, Welding, with honors, uh, Vincent Olson, who has already been mentioned uh, and be representing the state of Maine in uh, a national competition, water mechanics with honors. Chad O'Malley, also previously mentioned early childhood occupations. And finally, last but not least, Corey Wright, uh, auto mechanics, also with honors. Uh, 13 of the 25 students attending uh, pass. Um, have now graduated. I'm sure there'll be a new contingent moving in. I'd like to mention again that PASS is not a dumping ground for spec ed. Uh, many of these students are going on to college. Many of them have very serious college plans. There are 
any number of opportunities there. We heard from uh, quite a few students taking things like early childhood occupations or moving on to college to take degrees in child psychology, things like that. So I, I certainly, again, urge everyone to take another look at PASS as an opportunity for another form of education. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, next on the agenda is unfinished business. There being none, we'll move on to new business, uh, the first being the consideration of the superintendent's nomination of an athletic fee, of athletic fee positions for the 98 fall season. Went from singular to plural rather quickly there. Mm -hmm. uh, at the high school, Lisa Fall coaching nominations, Andy Strout, Varsity's Boys Soccer, Ben Raymond, JV Boys Soccer, Jeff Thorick, fresh, Freshman Boys Soccer. Charlie Carroll, Varsity Girls Soccer, Craig Roberts, JV Girls Soccer, Mary Ann Doss, Girls Cross Country, Janet Hoskin, Varsity Field Hockey, Sue Weatherby, JV Field Hockey, Field Hockey, yes. Karen Willows, Freshman Field Hockey. At the middle school, Joe Dome, Boys Cross Country, Therese Roberts, Girls Cross Country, and Sarah Randall, Eighth Grade Field Hockey. And then we have two that Keith categorizes as new coaches, but they're not new people to us. But anyway, Paul Jackson for golf and Larry Greer for boys cross country. And those are both at the high school. Is there a motion? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendation for the athletic fee positions as listed. Second. Discussion? There being none, all in favor? Seven zero. Do you wish me to read the co-curricular list, or do you wish to? You've all had it in your packet. I don't know. It's your pleasure. Has everyone had a, an opportunity to review that? I, I don't think it is necessary. I do need to be, add one item, and that's the email administrator, Barbara McLean, and she has done that for us this year as well. Okay. Other than that, the list stands as printed. Okay. I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for co-curricular positions. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. The next on the agenda for new business are policies. Uh, first reading, uh, presented for a first reading this evening, are, um, let's see, three policies and one administrative guideline. Am I right, Mary? Yes. Um, these are policies that appeared not to um, uh, be existing in our current uh, policy manual. They were uh, absent and they are required policies. The first ADA, which has to do with school district goals and objectives, uh, in place of that, I believe, was the mission statement uh, for the Cape Elizabeth uh, school system. Um, and uh, we have... Uh, um, basically prepared for first reading ADA, which is a, a brief um, introduction to the school district goals and objectives. And uh, we have decided that um, we would put as an attachment um, uh, the mission statement um, and we would insert the annual goals and objectives as determined by um, the board in conjunction with the administrative council. The next is ADC, tobacco use and possession, followed by ADCR, which are the administrative uh, guidelines. Um, and we, while we did mention smoking in some areas, um, there was not a specific policy to, um, to expressly prohibit um, tobacco use and possession. Uh, this was uh, reviewed uh, and uh, drafted uh, by the policy subcommittee for presentation um, as a first reading this evening. And uh, last is uh, JICFA, student hazing. Um, again, we uh, reviewed a model uh, for this policy, uh, made revisions, and uh, have presented that this evening for a first reading by the board. Are there any questions uh, regarding any of those uh, policies. John. 
On the tobacco use and possession, uh, ADC-IR on the second page, other persons in violation, is there any enforcement in reference to visitors or anything intended to be for enforcement? John, could you make that? What is the what is the reference again that you're looking at specifically? It's, uh, ADC R, uh -huh. page two of two. Okay. And uh, other persons in violation. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've missed something, but I don't see any reference to any enforcement in reference to if there were a violation. This is this is part of section two under on page one of enforcement. The principal shall report any violations of this policy procedure as promptly as practic practicable to the superintendent. Yeah, on the C, it says other persons in violation. Examples, um, employees, visitors shall be immediately directed to cease behavior. Then where is the reference to how to enforce it? Is it does it go back to the first page? Referred to a law enforcement agency? Right. I think we discussed that and we yeah weren't sure that with every incident that we would refer those to a law enforcement agency thinking at a sporting event visitors or someone might unknowingly be smoking and therefore they would just be asked to cease behavior um, I think we sort of discussed it and felt comfortable with that but I guess if it was something blatant and refused to I would think at that point we would refer out Anyone else have any memory of that discussion? I, I think that's the way it went, and I'm not sure whether or not we meant to put something in writing, but we certainly uh, recognize that any responsible adult would ask any re anyone smoking on school grounds to stop. Uh, I really don't think we got too too heavily into uh, going beyond that in terms of enforcement, though. The next part we did certainly have that further um, oh absolutely you were selling for or sale distribution, distribution possession you would go to the law absolutely but we weren't sure with just if if someone was just smoking that it would immediately go further than that I think that was my I, I recall that as that was the gist of the dis discussion is there um, do you have a suggestion John well I would I would think possibly it should be that someone may have the the option to seek some type of enforcement as opposed to just leaving it blank with there's nothing there to, to revert back to. If someone was blatant and they wouldn't cease, I would think somebody should have some authority. Uh -huh. you know, on the other page, it's quite evident there's authority given to do something in reference to students, but nothing in terms of adults. Students are easy because it's against the law for students, period, whether it's on school grounds or not. Maybe we could add something. Any blatant refusal would then be referred to an appropriate law enforcement. Law enforcement. Right. And if the uh, three prospective policy subcommittee chairs <laughs> could make a note of that. Um, Done. Thank you, John. Um, any other questions or comments about the first readings? Marie. I have a question a question and or a comment on school district goals and objectives. Yes. Um, in the second paragraph, the board will develop annual goals based on input solicited from a variety of sources. Um, are we not um, developing the annual goals in conjunction or in collaboration with the administration? That, um, that is That's sort of how I introduced the goals and objectives when I talked about them. Um, you know, I, I, I think, it, and we discussed this last night, that it should be a team effort amongst the board and the um, administration of the schools. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, that is the process, and uh, there was some discussion at the organizational meeting in terms of the sequence of the development of those goals, um, which will be, uh, probably shared by the superintendent um, with the administrative council. Is there, uh, is there a recommendation that you would make about the, change the wording? The wording? I, yes, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, maybe conjunction or collaboration, but I think that they should be listed there as well. Okay. 
Again, if we could uh, make a note for uh, tomorrow's meeting. Other comments or questions? Suggested revisions on these first readings? Okay, we'll move on um, to uh, 10D, consideration of a proposal from the policy subcommittee to recode the policy manual. I have a question mark by this. Um, but well, you directed can, can me to go through and, and recode it in conjunction with the list that we received from MSMA, and right. I just feel that we need uh, action on the board to allow me to make those changes. I think that's, I think that's good. Um, we did solicit from the MSMA um, input in terms of the, the current manual uh, recommendations in terms of what was missing, revisions, additions, deletions. Uh, part of that was recoding and um, Mary uh, sp spoke to that at the subcommittee meeting. Uh, I guess as the policy subcommittee chair, I would propose to the, to the board that um, we approve um, and move ahead with the recoding uh, in accordance with the MSMA guidelines that we received. So moved. <laughs> yeah. Seconded? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? 7-0. So we can move ahead with that. That's great. Uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to uh, teacher positions for 98-99. I have two nominations. Susan Metters, who will be a part-time social worker for the special education department. That's a .4 position. And Diane Reed, speech and language clinician. And that also is a part-time position, .6. Have their resumes in your packet. Motion. Uh, do we have a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for teacher positions for 1998-99, Susan Frost Metters and Diane H. Reed. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, second. Jennifer, any discussion? Do we need to just say it was a point four and a point six, or is that understood? And we'll, that will go in the minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Uh, next is consideration of a proposed soccer trip. Yes, you have information in your packet on a boys varsity soccer trip for August twenty eighth and twenty ninth. And the proposal appears complete. And so I recommend that you approve it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure that Keith Weatherby, who was here, can answer them for you. Do we have a motion? I move Beth? that we accept the proposed uh, boys varsity soccer trip on August 28th and 29th. Second. Second. John, any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. There's um, added to the agenda is a motion to transfer money from the contingency fund. I move we transfer the amount of $29,000 from the contingency fund uh, into the food service area to cover uh, a deficit for this year. Second. Any discussion? Keith, perhaps you could um, perhaps you could just just talk a little bit about what that deficit. It's a, essentially a movement of money from just to accommodate money that's already been spent from last year. Is that correct? That's right. We uh, there was some equipment purchased in the uh, food service area uh, last year that uh, wasn't originally budgeted for, so we needed to to cover that. Uh, there's also an amount of money. Uh, totaling about $11,000 of uh, receipts that uh, we have not received uh, to our lunch program. Uh, uh, this is in the Pond Cove Middle School uh, cafeteria. Uh, and this money will cover both of those uh, deficit areas. Thank you. All those in favor? 7-0. Uh, last is... Um, yeah. Um, just uh, be before we hit the last 
item on the agenda, there are some dates to uh, remember. And uh, those dates are um, Wednesday, June 10th at 7.45, that's tomorrow, the school board policy subcommittee meeting. Um, Friday, June 12th, 1998, uh, 2 p.m., <clears throat> Fort Williams, or, or the, the contingent lo other locations, uh, depending on weather, um, is uh, high school graduation. And a school board workshop meeting, Tuesday, June 16th, at 4 p.m. at the high school library. Uh, the topics will include learning results, presentation by the staff, commencing at 4 p.m., and at 7 p.m., a review of the school board goals. Um, and we'll also have a report out at that time from the all-day kindergarten uh, study committee. And we probably will need to do a short business meeting to do some nominations and perhaps some negotiation information as well. And also another soccer trip. Probably. And another soccer trip. Girls. Girls, Girls soccer. soccer. Well, we need a little equity, right? <laughs> OK, so it will be a, a busy workshop. Um, Moving to the last item on the agenda, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing employee contract negotiations. So moved. Second. So second. Those in favor? 7-0.